What do the following things have in common? The rocks in this canyon, the stones in this building, this fossil of a plant, this rock being crushed to make concrete, and this pile of burning coal, which is fueling this fire. All these things are examples of sedimentary rocks. We directly or indirectly benefit from sedimentary rocks every day. Every time you walk on a cement sidewalk, you're walking on a product made from sedimentary rocks. When you use chalk to write on a chalkboard, you're using sedimentary rock. And when salt is used to melt ice, you're using a sedimentary rock. During the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at some of the different types of sedimentary rocks and study some of their characteristics. You decide. What do sedimentary rocks consist of? They're made of sediments. Sediments are small particles of loose rock, mineral, plant, and animal remains. Sedimentary rocks are formed when sediments are pressed and cemented together or when they precipitate out of a solution. Where do all these sediments come from? There are a variety of sources of sediments. If you've ever been to the beach, you've seen millions of grains of sand, which are actually tiny pieces of rock that have been scattered by wind, water, and ice. While at the beach, you may have also noticed pieces of dead animals, such as shells. These too get broken down into sediment. And within seawater, there are many elements. All of these things have the potential to one day form sedimentary rocks. Wind, water, and ice move sediments from one place to another in the process of erosion. When sediments come together, it's possible for sedimentary rocks to form. There are many different ways sedimentary rocks are formed. Let's look at an example. This muddy river is carrying thousands of pounds of sediment. This sample of water reveals thousands of particles. As rivers begin to slow down or empty into a lake, the sediments gradually fall, settling to the bottom. Over time, layers of sediment slowly build up eventually forming sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are also formed in ocean environments. Here, close to the shore, larger particles of sand settle to the bottom to form sandstone. Or where marine life is abundant, limestones may form. Whereas in deeper, less turbulent ocean waters, smaller particles settle to the bottom to form finer grain shales. Large bodies of water once existed here in southern Utah. Over many years, the thick layers of sediment you see here were deposited. As the layers got thicker, the weight of the top rock layers pressed down on the bottom layers of rock. The spaces between the layers got smaller and water was squeezed out. Compaction is the process of overlying sediments pressing down on underlying sediments to become rocks. Perhaps you've pushed down papers in a wastebasket. This too is compaction. As sediments are compacted, dissolved minerals in the water form a thin film around the particles, binding them together in a process called cementation. Lithification is the term used to describe the process of sediments forming into rocks. decide. 
What's the name of this large canyon? If you said the Grand Canyon, you're right. The Grand Canyon in the southwestern United States is a mile deep and is made of many layers of mostly sedimentary rock. A rock layer is a bed of rock covering an area. The oldest layers are at the bottom of the canyon, and the younger layers are toward the top, having been deposited on top of the older layers. The Grand Canyon is an amazing place to study millions of years of sediments. Every year, millions of people from throughout the world come to see these marvelous deep-cut layers. These strange-looking rock formations are located in Bryce Canyon National Park. You decide. What are these formations called? They're referred to as hoodoos. It's an African word meaning to cast a spell. These hoodoos are made primarily of limestone, a sedimentary rock deposited when shallow seas covered the area 40 to 60 million years ago. Since then, the area was lifted and tilted, creating vertical cracks or joints. Water and ice working through these joints carried away sediment, leaving standing columns, spires, arches, and walls. Hard layers of rock capping the hoodoos protect the spires from rapid disintegration. Vivid reds, pinks, yellows, and browns are the result of iron oxides staining the limestone. How would you categorize these three sedimentary rocks? You may have said color, but geologists use the shape and size of the grains to group these particular rocks called clastic rocks. The word clastic comes from the Greek word clastos, meaning broken. Clastic rocks are made of broken down pieces of other rocks. Clastic rocks, also referred to as detrital rocks, are based on grain size and shape. Different types of clastic rocks are made of varying sizes of rock fragments. Conglomerates contain large rock fragments that are smooth. Concrete is a type of conglomerate. Whereas breccias contain rock fragments that are jagged. Small particles such as sand are cemented together to make sandstone. Even smaller particles such as silt and clay form sedimentary rocks generally referred to as shale. You decide. What's the meaning of the word organic? Organic refers to anything that is or was living. Living things, as well as dead things, contain the element carbon. Believe it or not, organic rocks are rocks made of once living things. Limestone, seen here in Mexico in these ancient Mayan ruins, is an organic, sedimentary rock made up of once living corals, shells, and other marine organisms. These organisms, once dead, fall to the ocean floor, forming deposits of calcium carbonate, which, when compacted and cemented, forms limestone. Limestone is a very useful sedimentary rock. It can be used to make cement, to build large structures such as the Hoover Dam, and even to make house patios. Another economically important organic rock is coal. Coal, a type of fossil fuel, 
is commonly burned for heat and is often used in facilities such as this to generate electricity. Coal consists of the remains of dead plants and animals deposited eons ago in large swamps. Another method by which sedimentary rocks form occurs in solutions which are saturated with dissolved minerals. These large structures were formed underwater when the lake level was much higher. The lake water is saturated with dissolved substances, which include calcium and carbonate, seeping from underwater springs. These substances form calcium carbonate, a whitish limestone material called tufa, which makes up these large towering structures. Rocks, such as tufa, which form as a result of chemical reactions, are referred to as chemical rocks. These chemical rocks are referred to as precipitates. Precipitates are rocks formed from solutions which are saturated with dissolved minerals. This is Death Valley, California. The valley, much of which is below sea level, is bathed in unmerciful heat for half the year. It is the lowest point in the Western Hemisphere and is considered one of the hottest and driest, as well as one of the windiest points on the globe. These forces combine to make it a very arid place. It is so dry that a lake 20 feet or over 6 meters deep would entirely evaporate in just a year. Rain rarely gets past these high peaks. The little rain that does fall occasionally accumulates in the low-lying areas of the valley. These areas of water are usually only a few centimeters deep, but they can cover vast areas. Because of the intense heat of Death Valley, these ephemeral lakes quickly evaporate, leaving behind mineral deposits. You decide. What is this large expanse of white? If you set a salt flat, you're right. These deposits, found in Death Valley, California, are generally referred to as evaporites. Evaporites are formed when water evaporates, leaving behind dissolved solids. Formations found in caves are another type of chemical rock. They're formed when mineral-rich water dripping into the cave evaporates, leaving behind these deposits of limestone. Over time, these deposits can build to form quite large formations, such as these stalactites. You decide. What are these colorful objects lying on the ground? These objects are petrified tree trunks. These once living trees are the main objects of attraction here at Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona. Millions of years ago, a lush forest blanketed the landscape. The trees fell and were buried under water and layers of sediment. Over time, they became fossils. Fossils are the remains of living things or evidence of once living things. There are many kinds of fossils. One way fossils are formed is via petrification. In this process, once living things are replaced by minerals. These trees became petrified as minerals gradually replaced the once living cells in the wood. Fossils very often form along with sedimentary rocks because organisms can be quickly buried by sediments. These dinosaur tracks are found in sedimentary rocks. It's believed these dinosaurs were walking through moist sediments, which hardened. This type of fossil is called a trace fossil. This plant fossil is referred to as an imprint fossil and was created when the fallen plant left its impression or imprint 
on sediments. Fossils can also form when a body of an organism creates a mold after being buried. When the surrounding rock hardens, it leaves a hollow mold in the shape of the original organism. If the organism decays and the mold fills with sediment, which then hardens, a cast fossil forms. Quite often, cast fossils look nearly identical to the original organism. During the past few minutes, we've taken a look at some of the characteristics of sedimentary rocks. We've taken a look at how sedimentary rocks form when sediments are pressed and cemented together. We took a look at how chemical sedimentary rocks are created. We also studied how sedimentary rocks are categorized according to the shape and size of their sediments. We investigated how some rocks, such as limestone, are created from once living things. Finally, we studied how sedimentary rocks provide a record of the past through fossils. So the next time you walk on a cement sidewalk, burn coal to heat something, or look at layers of rock, think about the characteristics of sedimentary rocks. You might just look at your world a little differently. Fill in the correct word when you hear this tone. Good luck, and let's get started. Number one, sedimentary rocks are made up of Number two, occurs when the weight of layers presses particles together. Number three, A is a bed of rock. Number four, the rock layers are at the top of the Grand Canyon. Number five, contain large, smooth rock fragments. Number six. These hoodoos are made primarily of Number seven. Rocks, which form as a result of chemical reactions, are rocks. Number eight is the process in which once living things are replaced by minerals. Number nine. When an organism decays and the mold fills with sediment, a fossil forms. Number 10. Rocks are rocks made of once living things.